Good morning. Happy Memorial Day to all of you. Hope you're having a great day and we'll have a enjoyable Memorial Day as we celebrate all those who sacrificed their lives for our country and we remember them. So we're coming up to the holiday of Shavuot. On the holiday of Shavuot, many of us have the custom to study the book of Ruth. Ruth, the Moabite, who became a convert and ends up being the great-grandmother of King David. And over the next few days, we will speak about her a bit and the stories we learn from her. But there's a fascinating Midrash on Ruth that says like this. Omar Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak says, when a person does a mitzvah, he should do the mitzvah with his full heart. Because if Reuben, one of the 12 tribes, would know that God would describe him in the sense that he saved Joseph, he would have done it with a full heart. And if Aaron would have known that how God describes the way he goes out to greet Moses, he would have done it with a full heart. And if Boaz would have known how God describes how he fed Ruth, he would have done it with a full heart. What's going on there? What's the Midrash telling us? So very simple, it's talking about three stories. The first is one of the tragic stories you read in the Bible when the brothers want to sell Joseph. And the brothers want to sell Joseph and Reuben cries at them and says, My bets are kinetic. How could we kill him? Let's just throw him in the pit. And Reuben had a plan, the Torah tells us. Reuben was planning to save him from the brothers. He said, I'll throw him in the pit and then the brothers will forget and I'll come back later and I'll save him. But Reuben goes away and we know the history. The brothers end up selling him and Reuben comes back and he sees his, bro his brother Joseph is not there. He cries. He rips his shirt and he mourns. Says the Midrash, if Reuben would have known that, the, that, that God would record in the Bible that he wanted to save him, says the Midrash, Reuben would have picked him up on his shoulders and he would have carried Joseph all the way back to his father. He would have done much more. And what's the second story? When God tells Joseph, God tells Moses to go become the leader, Moses says, how can I do it? I have an older brother. He's going to be jealous. It's not going to be fair to my older brother. So God says, are you kidding me? Aaron is going to come out to greet you and he's going to be joyous. Says the maid Midrash Rabbi Yitzchak. If Aaron would have known that the Torah records, he would have been joyous. He would have came out with drums and he would have danced. What's the third story? The third story is the story of Ruth. Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, are both widowed and childless. And Ruth tells, Naomi tells Ruth, go back to your country, you're a Moabite, go, you have so much wealth here. Let me go back myself to my land. Don't come to the suffering and the poor. But she says, no, I'm coming with you. And Ruth converts and they're poor. And one day they go to collect grain in the field of another person, of a, of a Jew. And suddenly this man, Boaz, greets them. And he gives her parched corn. And the Torah says it so beautifully that he gives her parched corn. She had enough and she had leftovers. Says Rabbi Yitzchak, if they would have known that the Torah is going to say that he gave her parched corn, he would have gave her fattened calf. He would have given her the best meal, a royal meal. That's what Rabbi Yitzchak says. The question, of course, arises. There's so many stories of our patriarchs and our matriarchs and throughout the Bible of people that do good things. Why is these three specific stories the stories that the Midrash mentions? Why not another story? What's Rabbi Yitzchak trying to tell us? And the Al Sheikh, who's one of the great mystics of the 15th century, who lived in Tzvaz, tells us something so beautiful. He says, these three people had one thing in common. They were scared to go all the way. They really wanted to do more. But they were ambivalent. They were worried about what people would say. And therefore, they didn't go all the way. And that's what the Mitzvah's trying to tell us. What's the story? So very simple. Reuben. Reuben really wanted to save his brother Joseph. He knew that he was right. But then there was this little voice in his head that said, maybe my brothers are right. And maybe Joseph is going to ruin our family. And maybe he has to be killed. So he was ambivalent. Also, he was worried about something else. Reuben says, you know, you know what they're going to say? That I'm worried about my own skin. I'm the oldest brother. My father's going to blame me. So really, I'm not worried about protecting Joseph. I'm worried about protecting myself. 
So therefore, he went halfway. Instead of saving his brother and schlepping him home, he put him in the pit. The same thing is with Aaron. Aaron said like this, listen, if I'm going to come out to my brother and I'm going to dance and sing and, and be so joyous, people are going to say it's fake. He's just, he's really, can't be there's no envy from his brother. It's just that he wants to gain favor and curry favor with his brother. So he's saying how happy he is and he's jumping and he's dancing. People won't believe it. So he restrained his joy. He said, I'm going to be happy, but not crazy. Because I don't want people to say that it's fake happiness, that it's not real and really I'm jealous. And what's the story with Boaz? Boaz saw this poor woman. He wanted to give her more food, but he was worried that if he would give her a royal meal, people would say he's trying to seduce her. People would say, why is he giving her fat and calf? He probably wants, has a romantic relationship with her. So he was worried. So he restrained himself. Says Rabbi Yitzchak, if these people would have known that God was writing their words in the Bible for eternity and that he was writing what they did, that they tried to save Joseph, that they were joyous when, when Aaron came out, when Moses came out, that they really cared about feeding Ruth, they would have gone all the way. God writing it in the Bible would have given them the courage, the strength, the conviction, the vision to go all the way and to do right things and not to be ambivalent. And then the Midrash says something even more fascinating. Rabbi Yitzchak continues and says like this. In the days of yore, you did something and God and the prophets wrote it in the Bible. Look at Boaz, look at Aaron, look at Reuben. Their messages are recorded in the Bible. But today, when we do a mitzvah, who writes it? Who records it? Says the Midrash. Elijah the prophet and the Messiah record it and God signs it. What the Midrash is saying is something so fascinating to each and every one of us. It's saying, think about it. We question and we wonder who's recording our deeds. But if only we knew that God was recording the deeds of what we do. If only we knew that God was watching everything we do and it was being recorded. Then we would take risks for love. Then we would make ourselves vulnerable to do the right thing. Then we would sleep an hour less to spend more time with our soul. Then we would fight and go all the way for what's justice. Then we would care for those that are vulnerable even when it didn't make sense and calculated. We would risk those things to do the right thing because we would know that God is writing everything for eternity. That's the message Rabbi Yitzchak's telling us. In our own lives, don't they make that mistake. Don't think that God is not watching and writing and recording everything you say. Elijah the prophet and the Messiah record everything you say and God signs it. Everything is for eternity. That's the message when the Torah tells us in the beginning of Genesis. Zeh Sefer told us Adam, this is the story of mankind. The Torah is not telling us that this is just the story of Adam and Eve and Abraham and Sarah and Rebecca and Isaac and Jacob and Rachel and Moses and Aaron and King David. The Torah is telling us this is the story of every single human being. Every story we say, every, every deed we do is recorded for eternity. And that's the strength God gives us. If only we recognize this, if only we thought and contemplated this, we wouldn't make the same mistake that our forebearers made, that Reuben, Aaron, and Boaz made when they had no courage to go all the way because they were worried about what someone would say, how they would look at them, how they would respond, how vulnerable they would be in the life they had. What a message before we come to Shavuos. I want to tell you a story that just happened in Yerushalayim this Passover, which went all the way, no holding back. This person, this family realized that God was recording everything. There was a lady in Yerushalayim whose husband, she was almost 90 years old and her husband of 60 years passed away. He died during coronavirus and she was getting ready for the Seder. And this was going to be her first Seder ever in her life that she was alone. When she was a kid, she was at her parents. Then she got married and she spent 60 years with her beloved husband, celebrating every single Passover and her kids. And now her husband passed away. 
and there was coronavirus. She's almost 90. If you know the laws in Israel during Passover, you weren't allowed to go to parents, grandparents. No one was allowed to leave their house the entire Passover. What are they going to do? The kids were devastated. They were crying. How could they leave the 90-year-old mother to say to sing the Dayenu and sing, sing the Kadesh Urchatz and eat the matzah and the gefilte fish and the brisket alone without the family, without anyone? What are they going to do? But they had no choice. The law is the law. Saving their life was the best. And then this remarkable thing happened. The neighbor in the apartment building that she and a porch connected called her and said, listen, we have an idea. We have seven children, we have a big family, we're gonna be celebrating together. Why don't we do this? You'll open your doors and we'll open our doors and windows to the patio and we'll both sit next to the patio, next to our porch. It's connected. And you'll hear us, you'll celebrate with us and you'll do the Seder and you won't be alone. Look, she had no choice. She said, it's better than nothing, but she was devastated, she was terrified, she was frightened. How's my is gonna be? How's my Pesach gonna be? She gets to the Seder and she starts singing and she sings all the songs with them. And it was a, a beautiful Seder. Under the circumstance, it was so beautiful. And after the Seder, she calls her kids so excited the next day. And she says, Kindalach, it was a beautiful Seder. I need to tell you, this family with seven Kindalach, the melodies were so beautiful, but something fascinating happened. Their songs were the same songs like Abba sang for 60 years. Like your father used to sing, they sang the same Dayenu, the same Behisha Amda. Their customs were the same. Everything they did was similar to Abba. I literally felt like I was at my husband's Seder and suddenly I didn't miss him as much because I felt him present at the Seder. And she was crying when she said this and the kids were crying on their end because the kids knew something that happened before Pesach. A few days before Passover, this remarkable family with seven children called all of the kids of this 90-year-old lady and said, listen, we're going to be celebrating Pesach with your mom. We're going to open the porch and the door and we're going to connect and celebrate. But we want you to ask you a favor. We want you to record all the songs that you sang at your Seder with your dad. We want you to tell us all the customs because this year your mother at 90 years old and being vulnerable for the first time without her husband in 60 years, we want to sing your songs. We want to do your customs. We want her to feel at home. And please do this for us. This family with seven kids, they weren't ambivalent. They weren't worried. They went all the way. They did what was right and beyond to make a difference in this woman's Seder. And that's the message that Rabbi Yitzchak says on, in the Midrash on the story of Ruth. Reuben, Aaron, and Boaz were remarkable people. They did the right thing, but they were ambivalent and scared of what people would say and how people would look at them and they didn't do the right thing. But if they would know that God is recording every single deed, they would have gone all the way. Reuben would have carried Joseph on his shoulders and schlepped him home. Aaron would have came out with, a drum, with drums and trumpets and tambourines. Boaz would have given fat and calf. And the same is true of us. What does the Midrash finish? Who writes our books? Elijah and the Messiah. And God signs it. Don't be ambivalent. Take risks for love. Be vulnerable to do the right thing. Stand up for justice. Care for, the right, for, for, for those who need us most. And Hashem will bless us and record it for eternity. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.